But right now, I'm joined by LeVar Arrington and former Pro Bowler, Heisman Trophy winner, my boy, former teammate and uh, Dallas Cowboy, Eddie George. So let's start off in Dallas, Texas, where the Cowboys uh, and Dak Prescott are still in a standoff over the quarterback's new contract. There's been a lot of debate o- over who has the upper hand right here, but the NFL Network's mm-hmm. in Rappaport thinks it's pretty clear that Dallas needs to get a deal done more than Dak does. Rappaport says the Cowboys see themselves as a contending team and that the window for them to win is right now. So they have to work it out with Dak. Eddie, former Cowboy, coming to you first. Yep. You think there's any chance Dak loses the leverage here? Oh, absolutely not. But without no, no question about it. I think Dak has all the leverage right now, Marcellus. Um, you think about who they have as a backup, and Andy Dalton, they bring him in for one year. and You kind of know who Andy is. And one thing that we know about Jerry Jones, that he wants to win. He wants to win right now. This team is built for success. They're built to win a championship with Ezekiel Elliott getting his deal a couple years ago. They just wrapped up Amari Cooper. They're bringing in some pieces and parts to shore up the defense. So he wants to win right now. And we both know, and we all know on here, is that you have to have a solid quarterback at that play. And that, and that to me, is a top-10 quarterback in this league. He's, um, he's definitely worth the money that he's asking for. It's just a matter of working out the nuances. So if, Barry, if nothing happens between now and the start of the season, whatever we start the season – there's no injuries. He has all the he has all the all the levers in his corner, and I think that he gets the deal done some way somehow. Yeah, while I agree with with your points, Eddie, I still have to disagree and say that there is a chance that he could lose leverage for the very fact of what you just stated. What could happen now from now until the start of the season? If they get back to meeting and having workouts. This is a new coach. And what do new coaches do when they come into the fold of a a new team? They have to root out and get rid of and address old problems for the reason why he's coming in as the new head coach. And then you have to sniff out and figure out what the new problems are and try to avert any type of new problems becoming a big issue that could hurt the development of the team. So I look at it from the standpoint of if in any way, with there being no emotional attachment between McCarthy and, and Dak Prescott that I know of, he's going to approach this looking at this team from the perspective of, I want to make sure that I have the culture and have the culture right and the attitudes right that exists here in Dallas. And I think that could play against him. Dak Prescott, that is. There's no way Hmm. Dak could lose leverage. Outside of injury, not a single chance, not a single opportunity will present itself where Dak can lose leverage. Think about who Dak Prescott is. This is a guy who was a fourth-round draft pick sitting there in his mindset thinking, I'm going to learn from the $100 million man in Tony Romo and was thrust into the starting role that same rookie year and led them to 13 wins. This is the same Dak Prescott when they put the gun to his head in his contract year and say produce or else, he had a career year. This is the same Dak Prescott that's been so durable he hasn't missed a start yet in his NFL career. Only Russell Wilson and Phillip Rivers could say that in the last four years since Dak has been a quarterback. So when we're talking about losing leverage, we can't lose sight of who Dak Prescott is. This is the guy, man, that when it matters most, Dak's going to present his best self, not only on the field, but doing it the Dallas Cowboys way. And we all know this, especially you, Eddie, putting that star on your helmet. It brings a different level of scrutiny and attention. And Dak has held that role and been responsible with that leadership role better than anyone else we've seen in that situation. So when you look at it from that perspective, LeVar, you got to understand that You're talking about the culture, and you're talking about this guy. And this guy is the culture. There's no way he can lose his leverage because he means so much to them. He is the culture? Come on now. I'll let Eddie go, but I'll I'll address you after Eddie goes. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. Listen, okay, okay, I'll go. So you talk about the – Marcel, you mentioned something very um, interesting in terms of being the quarterback in Dallas. That's like no other place. I mean, that's – you are given the reins, the keys to the to the to the uh, to the bench, so to speak, because this is the uh, the richest franchise in NFL history. Uh, uh, it's so much weight, so much scrutiny that comes on that position. 
And Dak Prescott, not only did he perform last year, but he got better from his rookie year on. And to hold that weight and to hold that scrutiny to deal with all the stuff you have, he's dealt with it tremendously. And to say that you're trying to rebuild the culture and establish your own culture, this, well, this locker room has been together for quite some time. So it's not like you're taking on uh, the rookie quarterback, you're, you're rebuilding the team. He's getting a well-established cupboard of talent in the Dallas Cowboys. All Mike McCarthy has to do now is organize it, establish some leadership, and let Dak and those guys do his thing. So I think, you know, for Dallas to lose that Prescott, you're losing a leader, you're losing uh, experience, you're losing a, a guy that uh, has done it and is getting better. He's, he's entering his prime as a quarterback. So he has all the leverage in the world. And again, I go back to Jerry Jones. Jerry doesn't care about the money. He's a billionaire. He's not trying to win on the bottom line like most of these <laughs> franchises are doing. He is trying to win a championship and say, listen, before I make my exit out, I have another championship put up on the, the on the back of my wall. So that's what he wants right now. Dak Prescott gives him the best chance to do that. So all the leverage is in his court. What was their record last year? Oh, okay. Hey, Anyways, hey. like moving. Well, okay, so, he's so, he's all, all right. I do, I do, I do realize that y'all both have put the star on your head. So you have a different angle, a different perspective. But let me give y'all a dose of reality with no chaser. Dak Prescott is not. Dallas culture. He's not the culture. Dallas Cowboys, the brand, is the culture. All right? Now, if you're going to pay him based off of the things that you guys are presenting as the evidence to what makes him the, the culture or what makes him worthy of, of having this leverage, I think I got to push back and say when you look at saying that Dak Prescott is a top 10 quarterback, I would not disagree with that. But when you're asking for top three money as a quarterback, you're going to have to bring up the real issues of what that represents. Dak is trying to leverage for a number one paid, compensated quarterback, and he's not the number one guy deserving of getting number one paid money. So if we're talking about all the things that Dak represents, I won't disagree with that, what he brings to the table as a player. I don't disagree with that. But to say he's the culture of Dallas, I disagree. <laughs> To say that he has all the leverage to demand the type of money that's going to be around and up where Russell Wilson is now, currently, or where Mahomes is going to be, I think yeah. that that's a stretch. That's a stretch. So who are you going to rely on? Lamar. I know we got to go to another topic. Okay. No, no, no Eddie, so keep going. Mind. I want to hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so who are you going to rely on opening day? And you going to hand the keys off to Andy Dalton? That offense not the same without Dak Prescott, period. It, it helps Ezekiel Elliott out. The fact that Dak can pull it and run around the edge it takes a lot of pressure off Ezekiel. Now, you put a, like a sitting duck, like, you know, no offense to Andy Dalton, but if you put a sitting duck back there where he can't run and be dynamic on the edge and throw the ball downfield and, and be uh, uh, somewhat of a, a magician, so to speak, it, it, it really just makes them more of a target in terms of stopping Ezekiel Elliott and more predictable. So Dak, Dak Prescott is uh, now in that phase where he can run the football. He can throw it on the edge. He had a big, a big year last year uh, passing-wise. So, you know, you take him out of that offensive element, it messes up the chemistry. It messes up Ezekiel. I think it just really tanks on that offense. And I, I don't see that happening. Uh, Eddie, uh, in terms Eddie of him you, do know, you do know that defense is schemed to stop Ezekiel Elliott this past season. In, in right. an attempt to make Dak Prescott win with his arm, and they and, were and what happened, 18. The result they, of that? they were a 500 team. Well, LeVar, LeVar, you have to understand, you do remember how it felt to be on the field, not just in front of the camera. And on the field, guess what? You know who gets paid? It's not just necessarily the best. Because Russell Wilson, I'm not sure, is the best quarterback. But the next man up, who has potential and proven production will get the most. Jimmy G two years ago wasn't clearly oh. the best quarterback, but got the most money in NFL history. Let's put that point to the side. Let's talk about how this world is upside down to Dak Prescott. A two-time pro bowler, Dak Prescott. And you know what's so crazy? Last year, his best year, he doesn't even make the pro bowl. It's really myopic to blame all of the Cowboys' woes last year on just on Dak, Dak Prescott. Prescott. My, my last point is about culture. Why Dak Prescott is the culture. Because 
A lot of people have it wrong about what culture is. They think it's about what you write on the wall, what slogans, what mantras. Hey, be kind to others. It's not this. <laughs> ben Horowitz talks about in his book, culture is what's rewarded. Culture is what you want to see in terms of going forward and how everyone buys in and treats each other. That's why they have to reward Dak Prescott, to enforce what the culture is. Reward the player that is representing the star the best and allowing it to shine the most. That's who Dak Prescott is, and that's why he's going to get paid. Now let's talk about a guy who just got himself a new deal in a new city with a new team, Tom Brady. Even though Brady's about to turn 43, Coach Bruce Arian says he's fully confident in the GOAT and gushed about his experience coaching Brady at the Pro Bowl back in 2005, saying, quote, he wanted to win. Even in the Pro Bowl, he commands excellence, even on the field. There's no relaxation on the field when he's out there. If you're supposed to be at a certain spot on the route, you better be there, or he's going to talk to you about it. Eddie, you think Arians is expecting too much from Brady? Well, LaVar, you said the last segment in terms of culture. Well, this is a team that's in desperate need of culture. And no other. I mean, I'm putting all my chips on Tom Brady right now to establish that. Six-time uh, Super Bowl champion, 20-time uh, Pro Bowler. I mean, listen, the man has, <laughs> has the belt. He has the rings. He has the wife. He has the swagger. And he has the command of the locker room. Now, granted, you know, he may have declined in some areas in terms of where he's at in his age. And he may not be able to throw the, throw the deep ball accurate like he once did in his younger years but what he comes with is a command work ethic he can show that hey this is how i prepare for week in and week out uh for, for nfl games to win championships this is what i expect out of you and guys are going to listen and for bruce arians that makes his job easier because he doesn't have to control the locker room he doesn't say hey guys be in at this time and hold yourself accountable he can say hey you know what tom i have tom brady in there these guys will listen I can just slide in the game plan. Now I can just focus on managing the team versus running a daycare because Tom is going to establish the culture earlier on. Unless he gets in mm. there first three games, he throws 10,000, you know, the, uh, 10, 1,100, uh, 10,000 interceptions, and he's just taking up the place. <laughs> but until then, right now, he is the alpha of all alphas, and he's coming in there with a lot of respect. First of all, you came at me yesterday, Marcellus, for bringing up the wife and said that didn't agree, uh, happen to be a part of the argument discussion. I guess you oh, got to have a famous. Point. I guess you have to have a famous wife in order to be able to talk about somebody <laughs> else's famous wife. So I digress there. I will leave that one alone. Wow. I'm so weak. Okay. Anyway, and he has a famous I'm wife. Say yes. Okay, okay. I'm say yes. To, listen, this is an aggressive move by Bruce Arians to win. Now, it's a win-now mentality by Bruce Arians because we don't know how much time health-wise or time-wise Arians wants to put into coaching. That's first and foremost. But when you hmm. look at who they have behind uh, uh, Tom Brady, it's Blaine Gabbert and Ryan Griffin. I'll leave y'all alone on Ryan Griffin, but let's talk about Bl Blaine Gabbert. Hmm. The last time he played hmm. 10 games was in 2012. All right, so he's played. This is his fifth team. All right, this is his fifth team. If Tom Brady goes down, you'd have to assume that Tampa Bay season goes down right along with him. Man, look, Bruce Arians is smart right now. He's betting big and he's betting it all because what does he have to lose? Talk about Tampa Bay's history, Tampa Bay's culture. You can't get any worse than this. And when you see Tom <laughs> Brady walk in the building, you start to have that risk-reward conversation with yourself if you're Bruce Arians. You're like, wait a minute. Did, did, did I just get the GOAT who walked in the building who's going to minimize my risk and maximize my reward in terms of what I had at quarterback last year with Jameis Winston? Oh, you you're think I'm not going to be excited about this? We got to remember, for a culture to catch fire... It only takes one match. It only takes that one feeling like this guy can inspire us all. It's like if we were playing basketball, we are on a team, and then we get news that Michael Jordan is coming to our team. I don't give a damn how hard you've been working. I don't care how good you think you are. You're about to step it up somehow, some way, because 
The GOAT's in the building. And that's what Tom Brady's going to do in this situation. He's going to inspire others to make sure they step up and show their best foot forward.